Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Obviously, Toledo, you got to give them a lot of credit, um, but it, it's a great rushing team still, and, and they have a great running back. He's one of the best players in the country. Their offensive line is one of the most physical in the country, so I expect to see a heavy dose of that, and um, I think they'll be just as good as they were last year. It's just we have to improve and, and be better. What do you think about Collins' talent? Uh, he's phenomenal, you know, watching him in up close and in person last year. I mean, he was one of the better backs I've seen since I've been coaching college football. Just has the speed to run away from you, big, physical, can make you miss in space. So he's, he's a complete package. Coach, do you sense a confidence in your team this year after two weeks that's maybe different from, from a year ago? I'm not sure. Last year, um, you know, the first couple of weeks, we, we didn't feel very good about ourselves. I know that. We didn't play very well. Lots of penalties, lots of turnovers, lots of mental mistakes. And so through the first two weeks, it's been a, a cleaner couple of games, which I think helps our confidence. Coach, when you hear, uh, I guess, media people at least talk about the SEC, a lot of times it's them being a superior conference to the other Power Fives. During your time, in the SEC, did you see a talent gap between that conference in particular and the rest of the Power Fives? I, I think all those Power Fives are, are very good. Um, you know, there's great players in every conference. I think the SEC, some of the pageantry, some of the traditions are, are pretty special. Um, but I, I think there's great players in all those conferences. With the running the running attack that Arkansas had last year, was it surprising to see them throw so many times last week? Um, you know, they, they have a great tight end. They have great wide receivers. So I, I think Toledo must have been doing something. They felt like they could take advantage of that. Um, a lot of it looked like to me a lot of the uh, throws were attached to running plays, bubble screens, things of that nature. But uh, their quarterback is one of the most underrated players in the country, I think. Uh, I think if he played in a system like ours, he'd have gaudy numbers. They just ask him to do different things, but he's a very good player. Everyone's talking about the rushing attack and the passing attack. But when you look at the Arkansas defense, at the end of last year it was phenomenal, and this year's put up big numbers. Does that worry you at all? Anytime you play a defense like they have, I think they're giving up 12 points a game in their last 10 games. In this day and age in college football, I mean, that's phenomenal. So, yes. Um, across the board, they're very physical. They don't make mistakes. Uh, you can tell they're well coached. They tackle you in space. So it's going to be a, a great challenge for our offense. What's different about Arkansas this year as opposed to last year? I mean, they, they look like the same very good team to me on tape. So we'll find out. Patrick, in the first two games, has found 11 different receivers. How much does that help you with your offensive game? It's good to get everybody involved. Um, Pat does a good job of going through his reads, going through his progressions, not honing in on one guy. And um, I talked about it in camp. We felt like we had enough depth to rotate more bodies through and take some plays off guys where last year they may have played 60, 70, 80 plays. I think the most any of those wider series played was around 45 last week. So that's what we want. We want to keep them fresh. We want to have, be able to rotate more bodies in. And so um, that's a testament to that. Yeah, just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Um, it's going to be an incredible atmosphere. You got to, anytime you get a chance to play in a great venue, historic stadium like that, you got to enjoy it. And so um, we'll, we'll be ready to go. Uh, Arkansas's loss kind of obviously proves that they are a beatable team, but at the same time, they're coming into this week extremely angry. Uh, do you have any concerns you think that that loss helped or hurt you guys at all in your chances? I never look at it that way, you know. Um, I hope our guys are extremely angry as well going in there. But they're a great team. They're, that loss to me doesn't change who I thought they were prior to the season. They're, they're a top 20 team. Um, everybody has a bad day. And you got to take your hat off to Toledo. They had a year to prepare for that team. And Arkansas hadn't seen them on film in 2015. And they came out and played a great game. You guys had seven different players uh, able to, to get in the end zone. Talk about kind of just getting to spread the wealth out. Uh, That's what we talk about. Uh, we talk about playing for each other and um, everybody getting a piece of the action if we do that. And so it was good to see that come to fruition on, on Saturday, and hopefully that continues. Is your approach any different as far as handling success, or is it just business as usual? No, it's just business as usual. We're a long way from 
handling success. So we need to uh, we need to continue to get better. I, I like the step we took from week one to week two, and we need to continue to see that each week. Will it be important for you guys to get out with the lead early so that maybe Arkansas has to pass more than run? I hope we can start fast. I think you know the first couple of weeks we did offensively, defensively, probably not as fast as we'd like to. But uh, like I said earlier, I think that quarterback can play for anybody. So whether they got to run it or throw it, I, I think um, they're in good shape. Defensively, you guys will be facing the biggest O-line in football. What are you guys doing to prepare for those big guys? Yeah, just continue to try and get better. You know, We faced them last year and didn't have much success. So hopefully, we've gotten a year bigger, stronger, faster, and better, um, because it's going to take that. Do you coach your last year at all and, and talk about last I don't, year? I don't have to. I mean, they, they know what that was. I mean, you don't forget a beating like that. So um, there's not a bunch of rah-rahs about last year. They know what that was. You talk about their two tight ends. They're huge, athletic. They, they can pretty much do it all. They are. They look like basketball players out there running down the field. Um, Great blockers, you know, that's what jumps out to me is, is they're, they obviously find them in the passing game, but they're great blockers, use their leverage well, and both guys are going to be playing on Sundays. Coach, you've talked about it before, but right now y'all are tied for third in the country in turnover margin. How has that just helped you guys be successful in what you're trying to do so far this season? That's really everything. I mean, that's the difference in winning and losing at this level and in this conference. There's a lot of parity today in college football, and if you are at the top in that stat, you're going to have some success. So we got to try and keep that rolling. Do you have any status updates on Nigel, Bethel, or Bill Cantrell? I don't. Same day to day. Can you talk a little bit about how the, the offensive success helps the defense in terms of when you're playing clean and everything's kind of rolling? Does that translate over to the defense too? I think so. Uh, I didn't think week one we rose up together very well, but I thought last week they'd get a stop, we'd go score, they'd get a turn, we'd go score. Um, if we had to punt, they'd get it right back, and that's what you want. You want each side, including special teams, to feed off each other. So I think we're getting better at that. Does it sometimes work against keeping the defense off the field by how quickly the offense scores? Yeah, I think at times, and that's why you have to understand um, you know, in the Big 12, defensive numbers may not be what you'd like them to be, but it's all about wins and losses because teams are playing that fast. They get a stop. You score in three plays, they're right back out there. That's obviously going to affect them. Um, so I think it just all comes down to how you view things. Coach, I think in y'all's, I think it's 18 scoring drives this season to, that resulted in touchdowns. I think 11 of them have resulted in under a minute and a half. Do you ever want that to be higher? I mean, I know you guys want to score quickly, but just for your own defense's sake, does that ever run through your mind of trying to control the clock a little bit more? No. Just just get in. <laughs> just get in. No. If we just get in the end zone, whatever it takes, however however long it takes, just as long as we get in the end zone. As far as the defense is concerned, is it just you guys should be in condition, I guess? No, I mean, that's like I said, that's the Big 12. I mean, that's the league we're in. I mean, teams are going up-tempo, no huddle, not substituting, and so that's – you get conditioned to it in practice to an extent, you know, going against our offense every day, but um, you have to understand what a defense, a successful defense is in this league. How pleased are you with the efficiency of the running game so far, especially this past Saturday? It was better this past Saturday. I thought the previous Saturday I probably didn't get enough runs called and probably should have forced some more to DeAndre, but we, we can still get a lot better. There are still a lot of uh, plays left on the field in the running game, and, and against a much better defensive line this week, we're, we're going to have to get better. What did you see from Dakota Allen that was maybe different from uh, week one and, and the linebackers that you had in week one? I think Dakota um, just progressed the way we wanted throughout the week. That first week, like I said, we kind of got blitzed with the tempo, with a bunch of different formations, things they were doing, had a great scheme offensively. And this last week, a younger guy like him was able to see it, huddle, break the huddle, see where everybody's lined up. And I think it really helped him progress. Does it surprise you to see that last week against Toledo that Arkansas only had one of five red zone scores? I mean, does that bode well for y'all? I don't know. It's, I think that's where it's kind of deceiving because they had opportunities. They moved the ball. They had over 500 yards offense, so it wasn't like they just got dominated. They went up and down the field. They just didn't put it in, and sometimes that happens, and, and hence the result. But um, 
I don't know if it bodes well for us or not. It just shows that they are a very good offense. We did not. And is Michael Barton, is he the guy now in terms of your field goal kicker and your PAT? Is that still up in the It's area? still really week to week. Yeah, we're still sorting through that. We think Hatfield can do it as well. So we're not set on one guy. We're going to continue to have him compete. He did. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're just taking it day to day with him. Spasms? It is. Continually. Wow. What did you think of Rachel? Left some plays out there. Um, <clears throat> being his first full game starting, you could tell he was a little bit anxious, but he'll get better. Um, he has the skill set we want, and uh, I think each week, the more reps he gets, the better he's going to be. Coach, do you ever get caught up in the perception between Big 12 and SEC and just where people see them as far as power rankings are concerned? I don't, no. Having been in both, uh, like I said, I think there's great players in each one, and I think if you played each other, probably 50-50. I mean, that's kind of how it usually shakes out. So um, both conferences are, are very good and have great players. Why do you think there is that maybe national perception that they're leaps and bounds ahead of the Big 12 or, or just other Power 5 conferences? I'm not sure. I mean, like I said, there, there's a lot of pageantry. There's very storied traditions. There's a lot more players, it seems, get drafted out of the SEC. So there's stats that I can see put it that way. But then you look at certain bowl games, you look at regular season matchups, and a lot of times it falls about 50-50. But I, I think the world of both conferences. So far, the first two games, Pat's thrown for 619 yards in the first half. Do you worry that he's putting too much in the first half, not enough in the second half, or is that just game plan? Yeah, he hadn't played much in the second half, so I think that's probably the biggest deal. Last question, guys. Oh, it, seemed like on, it seemed like on Saturday you guys had some real wide receiver splits. It looked like some of the guys were even on the outside a yard away from the sideline. How has that helped maybe your rushing attack and creating some wider lanes for guys like DeAndre? Yeah, that team was playing a lot of man coverage, so they were coming where we were going, and we just took them out in space and <clears throat> felt like DeAndre could match up with their safety trying to make the tackle, and so it was more of just a game plan deal.